welcome back to another tech minds video so in this video i'm going to show you how you can set up some software to track weather satellites and decode their transmissions to a weather map now this video is much like a part two to my last video where i showed you how to make a v dipole for receiving weather satellites if you haven't seen that already then i suggest you go and watch that first and then come back to this video so assuming that you have your antenna set up and a suitable SDR receiver connected to your computer, then we are ready to begin. Now there are five pieces of software that we're going to need, but don't let this put you off as it's actually quite simple when you know how. So first off, we need the SDR receiving software. And in this case, I will be using SDR Sharp. You can download this from airspy.com and it's a free download. The second piece of software we're going to download and install is called gpredict. Now this is our prediction software, which will show us on a map in real time, the location of the satellite that we want to track. The third piece of software is actually a plugin. And apart from installing it, there's not really much configuration. Now this is called gpredict connector. And this is a plugin for SDR Sharp that allows gpredict to control its frequency. I'll talk more about why we need this shortly. We then need to download and install an application called wx to img Now this software will take the audio from the satellite signal and convert it to a weather map for you to view on your computer. Unfortunately, the original developer of WX to IMG has abandoned this project and in doing so also removed all the files from the original website. Luckily, another enthusiast has replicated the website and is hosting the required files that we need. The last piece of software that we need is called VB Audio Cable. Now, you may have heard me talking about this in past videos, but if not, this is an audio driver that lets you take the audio output of one application and internally route it to the audio input of another piece of software. In this case, we'll be routing the audio output from SDR Sharp to the audio input of WX to IMG. Now you may be familiar with this kind of setup and you may have your own software preferences like using different decoder software or different prediction software. But what I'm showing you in this video is the exact software that I used in my V dipole video. So let's go ahead and download and install these software packages and then I'll show you how to configure them to talk to each other. All the links for each software package will be left down in the video's description. So the first piece of software that we're going to download and install will be SDR Sharp from AirSpy. So just navigate to airspy.com, go to the download section, and then find the Windows SDR software package. Click download. Once it's downloaded, uncompress the zip file. And then what I would suggest that you do is copy this SDR Sharp folder to somewhere like your desktop or your documents folder. And remember where you've put it. The next software that we're going to grab is called gpredict. Head over to gpredict.oz9alphaechocharlie.net. Link is down in the description. For the Windows installer, click on SourceForge. Click download the latest version. Once it's downloaded, you just need to uncompress it. And if you want to, you can just run the executable just to make sure it's running. Now, obviously, you want to save this folder somewhere like before. You can save it in your desktop or your documents folder or somewhere where that you can remember where you've put it. So next we need to install the gpredict plugin for SDR Sharp. So navigate to the connector GitHub page, link in the description below, and then scroll down to find the compiled version link. Now once clicked, you can then scroll to the assets section and download the SDR Sharp gpredict connector plugin .zip file. Now once downloaded, we need to uncompress this zip file again. Once uncompressed, open the readme file in your favorite text editor. In my case, I'm using Sublime. Now what we need to do here is copy this line of text and add it to the plugins.xml file, which will be located in the SDR Sharp installation folder. So select this line and select copy. We can now navigate to the SDR Sharp installation folder and locate the plugins.xml file. Open this file in a text editor, notepad will do, and then paste this line above the last line, which reads forward slash sharp plugins like this. Now once this line has been added, you can now save this file and close your text editor. What we now need to do is navigate back to the folder where you downloaded the plugin. Here we need to copy the sdrsharp.gpredictconnector.dll file and then paste this in the sdrsharp folder, the same location as you found the plugin.xml file. Now that's it. The plugin has now been installed into sdrsharp and it will be ready for us to use when we launch sdrsharp. Now the last piece of software that we need to install is called VB Audio Cable. And if you remember, this is the software which allows us to route audio from one application to another. Now simply download VB Audio Cable and as before, uncompress the downloaded zip file. And once it's uncompressed, scroll down until you see the two executables. Now the file named VB Cable underscore setup underscore x64.exe is for 64-bit operating systems. So if you're on something like Windows 10, then use this one. If you're not on a 64-bit machine, 
then double click the other installation file instead. Now follow the on-screen prompts to install the VB audio cable driver and then make sure you reboot your computer. So once everything's installed, go ahead and launch SDR Sharp. What we need to do is select our source. So for me, I'm just using a Nuelec SDR dongle. So I'm gonna select RTL SDR USB. Just gonna click the play button to make sure it's working. And it's working like so. Now what we need to do is just scroll down here on the left hand side until we find our gpredict plugin. On the gpredict connector plugin here, just tick enable. Next to where it says server status, it will say listing on port 4532. And I'm just gonna stop SDR sharp and we're gonna go down to where it says audio. Here, I wanna change the audio output to say VB audio cable, which is this one here. I'm gonna make sure that my radio is set to wide FM and then my bandwidth here is set to around 40 kilohertz. Now I have SDR sharp muted at the moment just for the purpose of the video, but obviously you wanna make sure that it's not muted when you're gonna be recording from the satellites. So the next bit of software we're gonna start up is gpredict. So go to your gpredict installation folder and run the executable. So the first thing we wanna do here is go to edit, preferences, click on ground station, and you want to add in a ground station. The ground station will be your home location or where you are now. So give it a name, a description. You can then put in your latitude and longitude, which you can get from an online service like Google. Select your altitude by typing it in here. This is feet above sea level and then click OK. This is so that the software can work out the position of the satellites with reference to your location. Now what we need to do is update our TLE data. So click on edit update TLE data from network. This will automatically go off the Celestract website and download all the TLE files for the satellites. Click close once finished. Then click edit and click update transponder data. This will go ahead and fetch all of the transponder information, i.e. the frequencies that each satellite is broadcasting on. Okay, so we're now ready to create a module. As you can see on mine, I already have some set already. So for example, if I want to look at some weather satellites, I've got these three NOAA satellites already programmed in, I've got Meteor satellites, and then I've got some amateur satellites. So what we do, we need to go to File, click New Module, give it a name, just call this Weather 2, select the ground station, that's the ground station that we just set previously, and then we want to find the satellites. So for example, if you want to find the NOAA satellites, highlight it, Click the arrow here so it goes over to this section. So I'm going to go for 15, 18 and 19 and then click OK. Now what you'll see now is up here the name of your module that you gave it and it will show you the satellites. And if you sit there and watch them, they will actually start moving. So this is real time. I'm not going to go over all the information on this screen, but it's quite interesting to watch. So the next thing we need to do is get GPredict to communicate with SDR Sharp. Now the way that we do this over in the top right hand corner, you'll see a little arrow pointing down. Click that and then select radio control. From the device settings here, select SDR Sharp and then click engage. We have a look on SDR Sharp under the gpredict connector. It now says server status connected. So back over to the gpredict radio control. On the left here on the downlink, we can choose which satellite we want to listen to. Our next satellite pass is going to be NOAA 19. That's actually not going to be for another five hours. So I could select NOAA 19 from here. Make sure that you select the correct downlink and frequency. So APT downlink, click track, and then click the T button. And what you'll notice on the radio control screen is the frequency changing, and you'll now also see SDR sharp changing. Now, if you've got three satellites like I have here in my weather module, then you want to just going to be able to leave your computer running and let it go through each of these satellites as they pass overhead. Now to do this, go back up to the little down arrow and click auto track. Make sure that it has a little tick box and now what will happen, it'll automatically change the radio frequency as each satellite is going over. Now if you've got two satellites going over at the same time, it'll choose the first satellite which came into view. Okay, so we have SDR Sharp running. That's receiving the audio from the satellite. We have GPredict controlling SDR Sharp and now we need to set up WX to IMG software so that it takes the audio from SDR Sharp and decodes it to an image. So let's go ahead and launch WX to IMG. 
Okay, so the first thing that you need to do once you've got WX to IMG running, we need to set up a ground station as well here. So we click on options, go down to ground station location, and we fill out our details here. So you can type in your city and your country and use the look up lat long button, or you can manually type latitude and longitude and your altitude in meters. Once you've done that, click OK. The next thing that we need to set is to tell WX to IMG to receive the audio from SDR Sharp. So we go to options, recording options, and in the middle here, it says common recording options, sound card. The only thing you need to change here is to make sure that it's the output of VB audio cable as shown here. Once you've done that, click OK. Now WX to IMG also needs to update its Kepler files. So if you click file, update Keplers, it will automatically go off to the same place as G predicted and it will download all the files that's needed to predict where the satellites are going to be. It's worth doing this every time you start the software just to make sure that these files are up to date. Okay, so now we're ready to have a quick check to see when our passes are. Make sure it coincides with G Predict. So we can go to File, Satellite Pass List, and it'll bring us a list here of the available passes. Now there are some further settings within WX to IMG where you can set minimum elevation and maximum elevation before it will actually start recording. It's quite useful because if you've got a satellite pass which is not very long but it's quite low on the horizon then you're not going to get a very good decode and you probably don't want to have wx to img record that okay so we looked at our satellite pass now let's set up wx to img to automatically record so i'm going to file record and then click auto record as you can see down here in the bottom it says status waiting for noah 19 on 137 100 at 511 utc which equates to this one here noah 19 you can now just leave the software running and it will automatically tune SDR Sharp and automatically start recording once the satellite is overhead. So as you can see here in this video clip, WX to IMG started auto recording and the G-Predict radio control software is now controlling the frequency change on SDR Sharp. Now the frequency change is important because of the Doppler effect that we get as these weather satellites are speeding over our heads. You can see on SDR Sharp window that the frequency is being kept bang in the middle of the transmission. Now any slight frequency offset would most likely cause a not very good decode. It would most likely end up with speckles and missed lines. Now once the satellite has passed, WX to IMG will automatically perform some processing on the received image and then present to you a few different saved images. And this is what one of those process weather maps look like. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if I missed anything that you required to know about, then please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to assist you. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.